coming up on DITV, we tell you some additional information about the new Night Ride Express. And later, one of your favorite fruits has won an award. You might not want to hear which one. Coming up in sports, we have updates from the football team as they prepare for their spring game. And we'll tell you more about one of the track and field assistant coaches. Iowa City could be seeing a lot of rain. Stay tuned as I give you more in this week's weather. All that and more coming up. Don't look away from the screen. DITV starts right now. Good morning and thank you for tuning in. I'm Cindy Zatz. And I'm Lauren Varel. We have breaking news this morning from Washington. House Speaker Paul Ryan has announced that he is not seeking re-election. He is expected to address his decision in the GOP conference meeting later this morning. Ryan has held his position as Speaker of the House since 2015. Stay tuned to DITV for any developments on this story. We begin with news on a local forum that consisted of the Iowa City Police, the FBI, and the NAACP. The gathering allowed officials and the public to discuss recent events in the Iowa City area. It covered, it covered hate related incidents, including the most recent graffiti found on the University of Iowa's Unity mural. It is believed the graffiti were Nazi symbols and have since been covered with white paint. Everyone in attendance shared a common goal in putting a stop to these incidents. Audience members were also educated on the Iowa hate crime laws. Johnson County Attorney Jeanette Linus outlined the four crimes that by state law fall under hate crime, assault, arson, criminal mischief, and trespassing. This definition is controversial as it bl blurs lines between racial crimes and vandalism. City High School in Iowa City is under a no shooting threat. This comes after a 17 year old in New Mexico threatened threatened, excuse me, a school with the initials CHS. Clovis Police in New Mexico identify the school as Clovis High School. Many schools with the initials CHS across the country have been anxious, but the suspect has admitted to the threat and is now in police custody. A few weeks ago, I reported on the new Night Ride Express service available to University of Iowa students, but there's been an update on the service and one aspect involves a poker chip. DITV reporter, news reporter Brian Cullen tells us more. Night Ride has been serving the UI community since 2007. It has been used by thousands of students getting to and from campus. Recently, the service has gone through some changes. One of these changes is an upgrade called Night Ride Express. Night Ride Express service is that Express is a direct ride from your pickup location to your drop off location. Currently, we have uh, two dedicated pickup trucks for Night Ride Express. If anyone on campus sees a full time DPS employee or a student employee, they can approach them and ask for one of our Night Ride Express poker chips, which can be redeemed with Night Ride to get a free Express ride. It's only been out for a bit, but in my opinion, I do believe that Night Ride Express is a better option than Night Ride because it's only a dollar compared to something like Uber or Lyft, which in Iowa City is pretty expensive. The seats look more comfortable than the bus, and the smaller cab gets for a more, more private experience. Reporting from the University of Iowa Department of Public Safety, I'm Brian Cohen, DITV News. Thanks, Brian. Iowa City is not concerned about losing funds over a recently signed bill. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds has signed a bill aiming to ensure loss of financial funding for Iowa sanctuary cities. These cities are defined as places who don't follow national immigration policies. The bill won't take effect until July 1st. Be sure to check out the Daily Iowa newspaper or the online website for Sarah Watson's full story on this topic. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg testified to Congress on Tuesday about his company's involvement with the Cambridge at Atlantica. This comes a month after Facebook was linked to the, comp to the company and their involvement with the Trump presidential campaign. Zuckerberg apologized to Congress. He also said that Facebook is rethinking its responsibility when handling private information of its users. Zuckerberg is set to testify again on Wednesday. The UI Mobile Museum is back on campus. 
Today, from 10 in the morning until 4 in the afternoon, the Museum on Wheels will be parked on the plaza in between the main library and the Adler Journalism Building. A few of the exhibits include seeing how art can help save endangered species and learning about ways to conserve Iowa's wilderness through raptors. The museum is free and open to the public and is also equipped with a wheelchair lift. Lauren, yesterday I had frost on my windshield. It was freezing. This morning, total opposite. I was able to put on flip-flops. It is supposed to be 60 later in the day. I know, Sydney. The sun has finally made a reappearance. Hopefully it sticks around for the rest of the week. Let's toss it over to Sam with more information. Yeah, that's right. I can't believe this weather has changed so drastically. We're finally seeing some spring weather today. We're expecting to reach a high of 60 to 4 degrees, a drastic increase in temperature from these past couple days. As we move later into the part of the evening, we'll reach a low of 46 degrees with a 30% chance of rain. Looking at the rest of the week, we'll still see some warm temperatures as Thursday we reach a high of 69 with some cloudy skies and a low of 56 with a 40% chance of rain. Then moving on to Friday, our warmest temperature of the week at 72 degrees, a major change from what we've been experiencing here recently. As night approaches, we'll reach a low of 47 with an 80% chance of rain. On to the weekend, Saturday, temperatures will be around in the 50s with a 90% chance of oh, excuse me, precipitation as we will get some thunderstorms and then a possible snow shower in the evening. We'll reach the low of 30s. Sunday has some more storms as there is a 40% chance of rain and snow in the morning. The temperatures in the cool 30s later that evening, we will enter into the low of the 20s and some mild wind around 10 to 20 miles per hour. Entering into next week, we will see a mixture of clouds and some sunshine with a high in the 40s and again those strong winds of 15 to 25 miles per hour later that day. Clouds will still be around with a low in the 30s. Trying to So go ahead and try to stay dry this week, guys. Have a wonderful Wednesday and back to you at the desk. Thanks, Sam. The final public meeting will take place for downtown Iowa City renovation. Discussing the Pedma Improvements Plan, it will focus on construction details and what to expect in the coming weeks. This, the, the meeting excuse me, is tomorrow at 4.30 in meeting room A of the Public Library. Constru construction will begin this year on the Dubuque Street walkway, which includes Black Hawk Mini Park. In 2019, construction of the east-west access of the Pedma will take place. A few weeks ago, we told you about how Iowa City is remembering Calder Willis. And Loring is truly amazing what they are doing. Yeah, you're right, Sydney. And yesterday would have been this, his 13th birthday. Iowa City has done something amazing to remember him. DITV News reporter Gustavo Meyer has more. That's right, guys. Calder Willis's family is remembering him by helping the Iowa City community. The Willis family has donated $16,000 to the development of the River Crossings Park in Iowa City. The money was originally intended as a college savings for Calder to attend the University of Iowa. According to his mother, Calder talked about a degree involving pharmaceuticals, most likely because he had become knowledgeable on the pills he took to treat his stage 4 lymphoma. The family is also looking to sponsor a project or structure at City High School where Calder would have attended. That's all I have for you guys in the segment studio. Back to you at the desk. Sydney, since the weather is getting warmer, football is back. I'm super excited. Me too. And to tell us more in the sports studio, we have Delaney and Natalie. Guys, what can you tell us? It's hard to believe, but the spring game is only a week and a half away, and I'm certainly excited to get back into Kinnick. Natalie, I definitely agree with you on that one, but I'm guessing the players are a little more excited than us. So here's what they had to say on how the spring season has been shaping up. Spring ball is time for us to improve our fundamentals. Uh, me individually, I'm working on trying to get better at blocking, route running, pass catching, kind of all of the above. Uh, Coach Brian's been a, doing a great job of breaking it down step by step and uh, really coaching it up. I think just leave the goal um, is to become a starter here. Um, so I've been in the backup role for a couple years now. So kind of the goal is to just transition um, and hopefully be a starter. But I mean, I can't control that. All I can do is control my effort and uh, my attitude and leadership. We always want to improve in everything we do, even in the past game. Everything comes down to us, making sure the quarterback can hand the ball off or throw it. So we take a lot of pride in what we do and what we're going to accomplish. I feel like it's, it's really exciting just getting back into Kinnick. You know, I haven't touched the field since uh, 
What game was that? I, I don't even know what game was it. It was just, it's been a long time. That's how I know. Um, it's, it's really exciting getting back out there in Kinnick. Uh, I just, I just want to create some more great memories out there. Yeah, they're definitely more excited to get back out on the field than we are. And yesterday, we also heard from the quarterbacks coach Ken O'Keefe and wide receivers coach Kelton Copeland about how their units are looking for this spring season. The improvement's so vast, it's even, it's, it's hard to describe it all. You know, when you, when you watch these guys, it's almost, uh, you, know, you know, you can't even, you know, when, you, when your first child is born and, you, you know, they first learn how to crawl and then now they, you know, they, they, you know they, they first learn how to roll over, then they learn how to crawl, then they learn how to crawl, or crawl faster, and they, then they're up and they're, you know, they're wobbling around the house. The next thing you know, they're running all over the place, and you can't even you can't stop them, and you can barely remember what it was like when they were just you know rolling around. Well, that's that's kind of how it is here. You can, you know, that's how that's how much improvement you see, and it's almost that fast. So when we talk about you know receivers being at a certain place, a certain time, it starts with off the field being accountable, and that's what we've been focusing on for the past year. This past fall and now this spring, just being accountable, you know, and, and hiring our expectations of where we need to be when we're supposed to be there. Just being more accountable, starting off the field, and now obviously we're in spring ball and into our fourth week. Now it translates to on the field. We'll finally get to see the team back in action next Friday night under the Kinnick lights. And Coach Clive Roberts leads the Hawkeye women's track and field team as their associate head coach. He has been very successful in almost every year that he's been with the Hawkeyes. And DITV sports reporter Casey Linnacrest has more. First and foremost, you know, I'm a God-fearing man, and, and that, that's what kind of drives me with everything. And I think I'm blessed to be able to do the things that I'm, I'm be able to do, you know, and knowledge that I've been able to attain. Um, but truly, it's just, you know, God first for me. Coach Roberts has seen consistent success in his eight years at Iowa, which would put a smile on any coach's face. But Coach Roberts finds more joy in seeing his athletes become accomplished off the track. I've always said that, you know, parents will send their student athletes here at the University of Iowa, you know, and I think the coach's job are, are to really complete that person, you know, for adulthood. But seeing them graduate is, you know, I get a lot of joy out of that. Competitions are certainly important, but Coach Roberts sees the value in bonding with the team outside of meets and practices, too. Outside of practice, we, um, like, you know, meet for coffee sometimes, just talk about, like, how the day is going or, you know, other things that aren't really track related. Usually before a really big meet, we'll have uh, Saturday night dinners at his house, and we'll just all, like, play games and watch movies and stuff like that. At the Big Ten Indoor Championships in February, Coach Roberts helped lead three more Hawkeyes to Big Ten titles. While individual athleticism plays a role in winning events, Robert's coaching strategy is certainly a boon to the athletes. Every athlete is different, you know, so we try to teach every athlete, you know, we, we try to look at every athlete from a different perspective and things of that sort, but, you know, so um, they may need different things at different times. What can we do for each individual person rather than, you know, just a steady set program where everybody's like on the same page, we're like all individuals, so we can't really do the same thing for everyone. Reporting from the University of Iowa Recreation Building, this is Casey Lindekrantz, DITV Sports. That's all we have for you guys in the sports studio. Back to you, Sydney and, Sydney and Lauren. Thanks, Delaney. For DITV News, I'm Sydney Zatz. And I'm Lauren Varel. Have a great day.